The research idea is really based on three premises. One is that there's not a lot of knowledge known about women in the well, Middle East, North African region, to be honest, and certainly not enough known about the United Arab Emirates and particularly Northern Emirates. So that's the first thing. A second thing is that women's achievements in this area need to be broadcast. There are achievements, but they're not known about. And the third thing, to be quite honest, is that we wanted to leave a legacy a legacy of resources that would help develop women in this area and also to broadcast information about women working in this area. So the third thing is very much the multimedia resources we have at the Virtual Centre that can be used for teaching, for training and of course for women's personal development. It was very interesting to listen to those stories and the podcasts, I think, are very much a medium where others can listen and they can hear the backgrounds of these women and what they became and learn from it. So it's a resource for, again, teaching and training and personal development, because after all, these women are role models for another generation of women. And even for the same generation, yeah. because I did find so much listening to them that it heartened me and inspired me in the work that I do. So, Lindsay, thank you so much for basically plugging our show. So, <laughs> <laughs> so You're very uh, welcome. For, for people who are listening to this podcast, it is called Women in Leadership UAE. And you can find this podcast in all platforms, wherever you get your podcast from. Feel free to listen to all these amazing episodes that Lindsay is talking about. I want to add something here because you mentioned about stories. Also for, I believe, for the podcast and also for the interviews, for example, typically when you ask somebody to come for an interview, usually they say, ask, what are the questions going to be like? You know, that's mm-hmm. typically, and I, that's, I think, for everybody. Yeah. I think that, that goes for everybody. So we had one interview and she came and I'm sure Lindsay must have briefed her about the project and what we're doing. But she had the first question was, okay, what are you going to ask me? And uh, Professor Lee said, Nothing. (laughs) It's like, let's take you back. And I'm sure that's a very interesting vehicle for telling a story. The reason why, because we ourselves don't often visit. So to cut the long story short, the interview gets over and and she's like, wow, I have not thought about those things for a while. So she took us on a journey from the time she began. And that's where the stories become so important, right? Because we don't tell our own story to ourselves. You know, and, and that is something I believe it's got like great healing power as well. I mean, you get to hear about someone and you're describing that someone that someone is you. And <laughs> Professor Lindsay is insistent, like, you know, okay, what happened then? <laughs> what happens now? So every aspect of that person's life, p- a personal, a professional, does come out. And it, it's an amazing. So when we were actually transcribing the interviews and we were going through the interviews, some interviews that I did not conduct, Professor Lindsay c- conducted, but I was going through the stories. It's amazing. Just amazing. Because they are not set of questions, right? Mm-hmm. They are not set of questions. So when you ask questions, you're very, you get very uh, measured in your answers because you're trying to just fit in to that question. Right. But when you say, oh, there's no question, let's talk. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> That is a very different scenario altogether. Yeah, that's a really nice approach now that you mention it because it really gets the other people to like open up. Yeah, which yeah. is more natural. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it is more natural. So the interviews start with a structured approach, which is basically gathering demographic information from the participants. So name, age, position, a little bit about their work before we take them back in the interview to where they started. And there are various sort of areas that we probe. For example, like, you know, what was your favorite subject at school? Mm -hmm. And 
why was that your favourite subject? Tell me a bit about it. Or, for example, why did you end up at this particular college or studying this particular academic programme? What was the influence mm. behind what, that? What made you move that? What made you move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's so many, so many instances. So the sort of classifications or categories of areas that we probe in these interviews. And then a Sabbath, so you have a transcript and then you have the analysis. And so what we did was to look at these women through the lens of the transcript and then start to discuss, okay, what are we finding that are themes, patterns of interest that are coming out of these women's lives? Until we got to the stage when we're having these very rich, deep discussions amongst us as co-investigators of what are the themes? And one of the themes that came out was the idea of turning points in women's lives. Now, this was fascinating because, again, we're from different disciplines, but all of us had realised that there were, some of the investigators called it a critical incident. Mm -hmm. Others, oh, it's a turning point. Others, oh, it's a shift in a direction. Yeah. But we'd spotted these elements that came up in these women's lives and they weren't sort of oh something happened therefore I had this choice or I had this choice therefore I did this therefore I did that it was very much how each of these individuals dealt with something that came up in their life either their personal life yeah. or their professional life and with Sabah's background in mass communications and multimedia I think it was yourself that came up with this piece yeah. in a narrative isn't yes, it of yes. a turning point so when we were discussing it I was like hey wait a minute this sounds like three part to five part uh, narrative structure so we were like okay I mean is that something that we are talking about is it the same thing because we are talking about stories at the end of the day so that's when we started thinking together in terms of, okay, that if that is the trajectory of somebody's life, then, okay, what kind of key events made that person change the course of their life, for example? And does that map to a narrative structure, five-part narrative structure? So that's when I think Professor Lindsay had this, okay, like, can we call it a turning point? Can you find a, a term which we can describe it and then look for that instance in each of the character's life? Usually when you talk about a research project, which obviously the end result is that you publish a paper and then you you know talk about you know the, the key topic that you have wanted to investigate, for example. But very few research projects actually takes a lot of time and effort for engagement with the people that the project is about. Mm -hmm. You know, so the stakeholders of this project are the women that we are talking about mm -hmm. and the website. And the list that, that Professor Lindsay is talking about is a space where they can engage with each other, right? So that is something which is perhaps trying to give back to the community from, wh from, from whom we got this information from. So I think that's a very key element which I really find interesting about this project, which is the stakeholder engagement. And the website is alive, you know, so there are things which are happening, which are being posted. There are people who are commenting and there are people who are engaging with the investigators. There are so many times that, you know, when we, have been, when we are talking about the project, we get like, a, in fact, for the podcast also. I mean, every comment or every kind of interaction we have is level of connection we're building with the people that we are talking about here. So I think that's very, very important for any project which deals mm -hmm. with people. And you have a certain audience that you are trying to reach out to. And using all these platforms, be it podcast, be it website, is to ensure that we reach everybody and we managed to get through this list to every person who might need it.